Hi, everyone. I'm Robin from Western Mass, and it is October 17th, 2021. We are on the Morgellons Call of the Week, and we're about to start our Q&A section of the call. So take it away, Richard. Okay, welcome, everybody. Chris, do you have us a caller? Do you have a, uh, someone who has a, an important question? Or unimportant. It doesn't matter. We handle them all. Yes, I do. I'm very worried, as I've said. I'm in t serious decline. Uh, they're in my bloodstream, and my veins are all puffing up. And that's why I want to go to Cleveland, but hopefully. And I also have an appointment with a vascular surgeon to check up my veins. Maybe okay. There, I something. mean, there, there's always a possibility that it's not just or uh, it's most likely something else in addition to the skin parasites. But uh, the fact that uh, yes, they're systemic for all of us. Uh, oh. they, they get into our brains. They get into our lungs. They get into our. Uh, they destroy our teeth. They they're in you know in our sinuses. They they're everywhere in our bodies. Uh, so that that is not uh, anything uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, veins are often affected. People often report that they have the uh, large varicose-looking type of veins. Uh, that's a total uh, thing that's typically reported. Uh, you know, it's, I'm not saying that you don't have another problem, and that you and I would suggest that you do get medically checked out to uh, rule out any other issues that may be uh, uh, present. And as far as getting any kind of diagnosis, were you the lady that was asking about getting diagnosis earlier? Yes, sir. Yes, well, uh, again, as I, I, as I had said there, uh, even if they gave you a diagnosis of Morgellons disease, they wouldn't know what the hell to do. I agree. I've, I've gone to every doctor in Pittsburgh, and I've been written off as a delusional parasitosis. Well, it's on your chart now, and everywhere you go, uh, that's going to pop up. And you, you've been, you, you've been, what do you call it? Uh, uh, you've been branded. <laughs> yes, I have, and it doesn't feel so good. No, it but doesn't, because they, no. they look at you sideways and they think that anything you're going to complain about now or any com medical complaint that you have is probably a, a delusional as well, which is sad. If I could find ivermectin or one of them, one of the, the, the medicines, could I cut down the numbers in my body and be able to fight harder? Well, did you complete did you complete the questionnaire and get my protocol as to uh, my uh, nutritional recommendations? Uh, no, because I had spoken to Barbara and she said, "Well, if you know you have it, and I do know, there's no doubt about it. I have more gallons and pinworm, uh, right, pinworm well, come out of." Then don't everything. don't believe what Barbara said. C complete the questionnaire, send it to me, because I'll give you a whole protocol of how to put your life back together, including dealing with pinworms. And it won't okay. involve ivermectin. Okay, and um, could I also do my, my granddaughter? I'd like to include her in this. Um, well, she can, she can complete a separate questionnaire for herself, because sometimes your experiences may be different than hers, but uh, you can both complete the questionnaire. Now, as far as ivermectin goes, it can be dangerous and cause liver problems. And and anybody who does ivermectin, uh, you need to do it on a limited basis, and it's a waste of time unless you're also using albendazole. Now, fenbendazole happens to be the, uh, I guess, the animal version or the veterinary version of albendazole. So you, if you ever really do uh, uh, ivermectin, and I don't really recommend it, except if you're dealing with strongyloides, uh, then you would want to use both ivermectin and fenbenzadol. But okay. generally, when we're looking at pinworms, we re I recommend diatomaceous earth, not uh, yeah, food grade diatomaceous earth. Uh, our mouthwash, Nature's Gift mouthwash, is, which is like taking liquid uh, charcoal, but this 
really goes after these organisms, and Sanbenzadol. You put those three together. Don't go with uh, black walnut or uh, the typical wormwood because they feed the, the uh, springtails and oh. are counterintuitive. Counter, you know. So that's where you want to go. But if you complete the questionnaire, I'll direct you to exactly what to do. You're going to take a super, a super multivitamin, the best in the world. There's nothing better than the one that we have. Uh, you're going to uh, do the, the best minerals that, that are available in the world. You're going to boost your glutathione, which is, I, we could do three of these things on glutathione and never cover it all, the value of we glutathione. And you're going to use, now. what's that? Nikki and I have been taking that for a year. Taking what for a year? The um, glutathione and l glutam however, the well, glutamator. Are you, is, it, is it max one or is it some other glutathione? It's a different one. We're getting max one shortly. Yes, you're wasting your money because whatever you're taking, you know, I've looked at them. Whatever you're taking, there's a high probability that there, probably a 99% probability that there are ingredients in it that feed the parasites. Uh. The second reason why it's a waste of money is because your stomach thinks glutathione is food and breaks it down. So only a small percentage, maybe 15 to 30%, you get a boost in glutathione. It's nice, but not enough. The max one will boost you about 270%. All right. Oh wow. Okay. And then the other thing is we have our our uh, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up a psyllin, a l l i c i n, it's a, it's derived from garlic, but not garlic. Don't take garlic substitutes think uh, uh, supplements thinking it's the same thing, but garcillin is said to be a natural antibiotic, antiviral, antiparasitic, antiprotozoan. Wow. Okay. Um, those four things, those four things often kill, often beat Lyme disease to the point you don't even need treatment for Lyme disease. Wow. Well, it's precursor. Okay. This is okay. not a treatment, not a cure. It's simply building immune functioning. Richard, so, here's the problem. Where do I, I have to have a doctor prescribe Fendazol? How on earth do I get that? It, you you know, missed what I, mean, I said. Fendazol. Fenbenzadol. But I'm saying, do you have strongoloides? I may. I may. I have right. several let's, pairs. Let's find out. Do you have any rashes around your legs or uh, your ankles or, or your buttocks or your waist area? Do you have any rashes? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. I had... Do you have hives around your anus? Hives? Uh, no. But my whole body. Have, do you have constipation, diarrhea? I have Crohn's disease, so that's not unusual. But uh, more constipation. I can't believe I'm saying this on air. You have coughing. <laughs> I have. Do I have what? Coughing. Coughing. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> I do. A lot of coughing. Yes, I have a lot of coughing. Did you have weight loss since you first were infected? Yes, sir. Uh, 110 pounds since last November. All right. Now. I, there's one more symptom that I that escapes me, but you have basically uh, three or four out of seven symptoms. So you go to your doctor, you do the responsible thing, you say, please get me a, now when you complete the questionnaire, I'll tell you, I'll give you all of the symptoms. So you go to the doctor, you say, I'd like to get a blood test for strongoloides, and he'll say, well, you're delusional anyway, but you'll say, but look up the symptoms. I have these seven or these six of seven symptoms, and please humor me. Get me a blood test for strongoloides. They'll send it to Quest Labs, and he then will prescribe you the right medication. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You've given me a real hope because my new PCP is a nice guy. The first day I saw him, he was looking up parasitologists. He actually believes me and knows I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. He knows it. Oh, thank you, Richard. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Keep coming back. Complete that questionnaire. Let's get your health and immune functioning built. 
We didn't even talk about what to do for Mergallans. We just talked about building basic health and functioning. We didn't talk about the nutritional supplements that are important to build back gut health, stomach health, digestive health uh, that are uh, super important. Also, how to deal with uh, uh, complications of uh, fungal organisms that are often uh, associated with Morgellons. So thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you, Richard. Thank you. you uh, yesterday I was thinking I wouldn't do it. I'm too Catholic and Italian to kill myself, but I actually thought about it. I, well, you know, welcome I, to the crowd. Welcome to the cloud. Keep coming back. We're we're here to support you to to take that frustration, aggravation, and depression that we've all gone through to varying degrees and change that into a call to action. That's what we want. We want to give you a call to action and for you to be able to say, hey, because of you guys, I stuck with it. I got my life back. Thank you. Oh, Richard, thank you. You've given me hope and you made those terrible dark thoughts go away. Thank you with all <laughs> my you. heart. You're welcome. And I'll keep you, I want to keep you apprised about the electrostatic sprayer. That's coming and the ozone generator for a car. They're very cheap online. Walmart even has them. Okay. So that'll, yeah, it helps to kill the car, stuff in the car. I, well, you want, to be careful. you want to be careful about electrostatic sprayers and ozone generators online. Because, number one, many of the ozone generators are toys. You can buy them on eBay for about 80 bucks, and they don't produce enough ozone to, uh, uh, to make a mite sick or to, uh, you know, to make one fall over. Uh, ours create about, I, I don't know, 7,000 milligrams per hour. And electrostatic sprayers, again, many people advertise electrostatic sprayers. They are electrostatic, but they put a negative, a negative uh, charge on instead of a positive charge. So you get no benefit. Okay. It's, a, it's a waste of money. So you want to be careful if you go shopping elsewhere uh, for these, uh, these devices. They could be useless. I, I want to mention one thing for the safety of the people who use an ozone generator. I have been using it for months now in my second floor and uh, when it got cold in Pittsburgh, the, the, I guess the cold air kept the ozone at breathing level for several hours longer. So that has to, you have to really watch that, the cold. Well, the, ozone, the ozone generator needs to be cool. If it gets too hot, it'll burn up and the, the efficiency goes to zero. Uh, so, and you need, to set, you need to have a timer. You don't want it running full force all the time. You want a half hour on, an hour off, half hour on an hour off. Uh, I had mentioned it in the earlier part, the, and then a half hour on and then off. So you don't want it running all the time. And if you're using it in an automobile, uh, I don't recommend it. The, uh, the people uh, uh, manufacturer don't recommend it for more than 15 minutes. But I think Robin will tell you she used it uh, much longer than that. But it can destroy electronics. And it can okay. destroy wiring. Okay. Okay. I just Thank want you. to kill, coming back. kill pears. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you Com so yeah, much. Complete that questionnaire and get it off to me. I will. I okay. will. Thank you. With all my mm -hmm. heart. If anybody uh, is wondering what the questionnaire is uh, and you haven't seen it, just email me. Return the email that you got announcing today's program. Return it to me. Say request questionnaire in the subject line. You don't have to do anything more than that. I'll send you the questionnaire. It's in Word uh, format. Uh, as an attachment, you can open it and complete it. If you're not into Word, it's also in the body of the email I'll send you. All you got to do is return the email to me. But before you press the send button, answer the questions and then press send. Okay, who's who's next, Chris? Hi, I called several times. Thank you. The diet is kind of working. Um, I'm really interested in disinfecting because uh, I can just – so this this program is really good for me. I've been using electrostatic sprayer. I've been using the clean them up signs and alternating that with another enzyme cleaner that's kind of marketed for bed bugs and and, and uh, dust mites. Um, that seems to work for short periods of time. I'm learning to I have to spray underneath things even with the electrostatic sprayer. I think that helps. Um, do you have any other tips? I'm, I'm doing a, when I start peeling them, that's when I spray, so maybe two, three times a day. Well, uh, are you still dealing with bed bugs? Do you still have them? 
No, I never had said slugs. <laughs> what? But what? I'm thinking the dust mites are whatever they are. Oh, the dust mites? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm positive. That, well, you call them dust mites. Other people call them other things, and like you say, it doesn't matter. They fly, and um, uh, they, they like certain light fixtures. Uh, I've been spraying my bedding materials with um, ammonia. That helps a lot. I can get through the night without peeling itching if I keep everything clean with ammonia. Um, but the rest of the house uh, and, and work and my car, I'm, I'm fighting with them. I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> and I have a new car, so I'm kind of hesitant to use ammonia. Uh, do you have any advice for me? And I, I'm really hesitant with using an ozone generator in the car. Well, the, the ammonia is, is basically uh, doesn't affect any upholstery or anything, but you might look into the hypochlorous acid that I talked about earlier <laughs> and uh, do some research on that and, and let me know how that works right. for you. But you would not use that in your electrostatic sprayer. Uh, did you change your carbon, uh, the cabin filter in your car? Oh, it's so new. I have it. Oh, it's brand new? Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but you I, in your car? I a six-hour chip in it. And, and now whenever I get in the car, I can feel them, you know, landing on my hands and buzzing my face. Um, so I have, I, so the ammonia doesn't break down the plastics. I can safely wipe it down and it evaporates. And, you know, I, I use like a, a, a now, you, cleaner, but, you know, I can't you get said it on these, the uh, these are some kind of flying mites? Yes. Okay, well that that well that outrule that uh, rules out dust mites. So it's a, it's not a dust mite that you're dealing with. You're dealing with some other kind of mite. So we'll treat it as a a bad mite. And the electrostatic sprayer is good for uh, getting them out of the air. And and when you spray your car, it's going to get the uh, uh, the top uh, the cover on the top. It's going to get everything around there. Uh, should do okay. pretty good. What are you using the uh, the uh, Delta dust. Yeah, the Delta dust Delta might dust. be good. On the I carpeting. To, I have to the try. carpeting. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, All right, that's a new one, so I'll add that to my to do list right now. <laughs> Where do you get the Delta dust from? Uh, do your own pest control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just go to do your own pest control, okay. and uh, there's one called Do My Own Best Pest Control too. There are two different companies, and you can get yeah, the Delta dust. Fun. Do it yourself, uh, pest control, and utilize them. I've, I've done a lot of um, fogging and um, for fleas and ticks and you know, anything I can think of, lice. That um, work. And I, and I have a, like a year of experience with the hydrochloric acid using a fogger. Uh, sorry to say it didn't help. But I did find, before I came across you, that Nixon hit with a uh, Enzyme cleaners seem to kill bugs. I, I tried the enzyme cleaner with one of like an ant or silverfish. Uh, it didn't have any effect. I tried hydrochloric acid on it and it didn't work. But when I mixed it to it did. So your enzyme cleaner has things in it that help kill bugs. So um, I'm delighted to have well, yeah, the, the larger organisms, I think you're going to want to use uh, like the diatomaceous earth mixed in with whatever you're doing and spray it. You know, you can spray you can spray diatomaceous earth. Uh, you can take uh, a, a spray, you know, a 16 ounce uh, bottle and put a, a couple of tablespoons of diatomaceous earth in using a funnel. Uh, uh -huh. Add water to it, maybe half or three fourths a full, shake it up well. And then you want to be careful uh, because uh, <laughs> It, when you spray it, you're not going to see it. It's going to be wet. When it dries, it's going to be very white. So you, you, you want to use a fine mist, and you don't want to spray a lot. In other words, you're not going to spray until you see it, because you're not going to see it until it's dry. Right, right. So, um, and, and then you just let it dry, and that's when it does its work, it, when it's dust. It's like well, it doesn't. It, it, it's going to dry, and it's going to have, you're going to see a white uh, covering. And it depends on how much you spray as to how white it is, how much, you know, whether it's a, a caked up or whether it's just a light covering. You only need a light covering. These organisms only have to touch it to uh, be destroyed. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I and, it's got a residual effect, and I like that. I kind of yeah. think that's 
Now, uh, now, you, so you don't, you're not dealing with bed bugs, is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Any any other questions we can help you with? Well, I I, I use uh, oh well, hydrochloric acid. I've used that in the fogger for a year and had no effect. Um, uh, except that it's like rusted my stainless steel refrigerator and other things. That yeah, so, so um, I, I guess it's just too much humidity and it, it, it turns acidic, maybe or, or caustic, even though it's low pH or, or neutral pH before I spray it. Um, so I don't recommend it. Um, uh, so I, I'll try the um, Delta Dust and the uh, Diatomaceous Earth. Earth and a, and a mister, and I'll see how that works, and thank you. Yeah, let us know. Okay, thank you. Keep coming back. Yeah, as I say, stated before in the earlier segment, we I don't really have much experience with hypochlorous acid, but it would be an alternative to people who have uh, ammonia sensitivities. And then, yes, it, chlorus means uh, it could be acidic, and it could, uh, uh, on metallic surfaces, could become an issue. So, yeah, you want to be careful and, uh, on how you use these things. Thank you. Hi. I really don't have a question. I did, but it got answered through the course of the discussion. So um, I'm good. And I just, as always, I'm very grateful for your, all your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robin told me how to read mine, so that's why we answered your question. <laughs> 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 Keep coming back. We love to have you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a this is a clique where everybody is the same equal <laughs> importance. I'm Denise, and I have a question about um, on page 128. You have your uh, menu there for us, and it does say green beans. And then I heard you talking a couple of weeks back that to not eat beans. So I am like confused. Oh, uh, I'm I'm not quite following you. Are, are you talking about food? Yeah, on your um your menu to eat on page okay. 128, it does list green beans. Are we not to eat green beans? String beans, green beans. Yes. Green oh, they're good. Beans. Yeah, no problem. Good string beans are on the diet. Okay, what is it that what beans are we not to eat? A couple of weeks ago, you mentioned don't eat beans, and I'm I'm well. It's like the the uh, lentils, the uh, uh, kidney beans, uh, red beans, things like that. And there's you know some question there, even though maybe if you soak them overnight, perhaps they're okay. I don't know. Okay. That's something you might experiment with and see if it works for you. But definitely, I know they're a problem if you just take them out of the bag and cook them and eat them without soaking them. Okay, that answered that question. I do wonder about walnuts. Will I ever be able to eat them again? Oh, sure. Yeah, you get the mid-stage, too. Yeah, yeah you'll, eat, you'll, you'll have beans, sure. Even with a columbola, doesn't it uh, um, affect it and reactivate them? Hey, I you know, columbola was the biggie in my life, you know, and I eat anything I want. I eat beans, I eat uh, watermelon, I eat strawberries, I eat, uh, uh, you know, salad with olive oil if I want. You know, not every day, but uh, every now and then. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Robin, your line is open, Robin. My line? Hi. Oh, the other Robin. <laughs> Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. This is my first time on. I Welcome. actually I think I talked to Robin earlier. Yes. Um my well actually I had wrote a text to Chris and um what I said is I said I've not been officially diagnosed with Morgellons. I'm basically come to the conclusion that I have it. Um I have this rash that's on my wrist with spots on my chest and some spots on both my arms, and I feel like I'm being bit with the stings and the burny feeling. Um, I recently had my amalgam silver fillings replaced in my mouth, the silver mercury fillings, and this rash flared up. I had to have, I had one of the molars pulled because it wasn't worth even replacing the filling in it, and when they pulled my molar, 
um, my mouth became infected. I ended up with a a bone spur. I had to go back a couple days later. They had to pull the bone spur out which then they put me on amoxicillin. But meanwhile, this flat, this rash just flared up, and it has not gone away since. And um, that was done, like, the middle of August. So I went to my dermatologist two weeks ago because my wrist was infected where it was all, I mean, I couldn't stop, I just can't stop itching it. And it, like I said, it feels like I'm being bit at... Dingy, Under your skin. Yes, 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 and I have spots all the way up my arm to like my elbow, and this is on my left wrist, which I'm I'm left-handed. I now have like you you can't see it, but I have like a really painful lump underneath where it got infected, almost like a cyst, like a ganglion cyst. I can't even go get that looked at yet because I'm too busy dealing with this this rash which is also on the right side of my arm, a couple spots on my chest. Again, burny, itchy, biting. It feels like my immune system was flared up when the tooth got pulled because all this stuff happened after that. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking I've probably had this for years and didn't know it was that. So I'm wondering what your thought is. Well, uh, based on what you said, there's nothing that indicates you're dealing with more gallons. Those, uh, everything that you talked about could be as a result of something else. The only thing that would require it, it to be more gallons would be that you have the presence of filaments or fibers growing from your skin that could be almost be microscopic in size. They can be black, white, red, blue, uh, yellow different colors. That's characteristically what uh, describes Morgellons. Uh, many people may not even see these filaments and fibers, uh, but maybe you find a, a cotton-like or lint-like substance in your bedding and clothing without any reasonable explanation for it. So that could mean the accumulation of these tiny little uh, microscopic fibers balling up over time and uh, appearing. So I would suspect if you have that or the existence of the filaments or fibers that you are dealing with more gallons. But I'm not well, here to diagnose, but that's what uh, basically you would find in Dr. Saverly's book. Well, the thing is, is um, where, it, where it started on my wrist, like, I mean, it flared all up. I, I don't even know how to describe what it looked like, but like, when you ran your fingernail across it, it felt like shards of metal. Well, it doesn't matter what you have, whether you have more gallons or not. If you complete the questionnaire, I'll be glad to give you a detailed uh, recommendations as to what to do to get things turned around and get your life back. Okay. Well, I had just, I mean, I just found you like literally two days ago. I went on DuckDuckGo and you were like one of the first things that popped up for Morgellons. And um, so I did order like your debriding soap. Right. I did order that and I ordered the book. Great. So I'm so, very fresh and new to this. Did you download the book? Um. Well, I mean, I've got your email and stuff. I haven't done anything yet. I saw, okay. you know, I got your email today in regards to the phone conference, so I wanted to jump on that first. So Great. I'm still very fresh to all of it. <clears throat> okay. But, but I, did what, order, if, I did order the book. Pardon me? If what we talked about today makes sense to you, the next step would be to read Chapters 3 and Chapters 4 of the book, Get the Diet Started Yesterday, you know, okay. for some people, it kicks in right away. We talked about sometimes it, Robin, it took three months for her to get the diet to kick in. But that's your first goal is to get the disinfection and the diet. The debriding soap is simply going to help deep clean, deep clean like nothing else has ever done before to get the organisms out of your skin. It's going to help clean those rashes so that whatever organism is tr contributing to rashes, it could be sub sub cutaneous bacteria of some nature. We don't know. Uh, I mean, the nature's gift has been effective at even cleaning MRSA out of the skin. That's how powerful it is. So we don't care what it is. We know how to clean it. Well, and also I know you mentioned earlier in the segment about um, 
black walnut and wormwood, and I had done some detoxing with those actual <clears throat> ingredients, and I'm wondering if that could have irritated like you had mentioned. Well, it, yeah, if you do that, and you, it, it just makes whatever you're dealing with ten times worse. Right. You know, and it's kind of, all I know is this all flared up around the time of me having my, you know, the fillings removed and replaced. Yeah. And so now it's kind of like, you know, I don't, I just know something's not right. Like this well, is driving me insane with the itching and the, I can feel like the biting. We can't, we can't, do, you know, we can't backtrack history for you, but if anybody else is on this call is looking at having their fillings replaced because of the concern of mercury, you know, just toss that idea out. Yeah, there's mercury in fillings. Yeah, there's mercury that leaches from the fillings into your brain and your in your body, into your cellular structure. There's also nickel. There's also cadmium. There's also uh, all these other heavy metals that get into our bodies through uh, various pesticides that we're exposed to and things that we're exposed to. No big deal. Boost glutathione. Boost glutathione. That's the job of glutathione. It detoxifies. It will wrap up all the mercury, all the toxicity, all the uh, pesticides, all the nickel, all the cadmium, and flush it out of your body. So you don't have to go do $10,000 of uh, uh, dental work to just get rid of mercury. You can boost glutathione and solve the problem. <clears throat> You know, okay, uh, well, I, have, well this, I had just one tooth left that I had to do, and I haven't been back to get that one changed because all this stuff happened with the, you you know, the rats and whatnot. You don't have to. Okay. okay. When, when the filling breaks down and they're saying, okay, the filling is broken down, okay, then have it replaced. But oh. in the meantime, if you complete the questionnaire and, uh, you know, these supplements that we have, are not just like you go to the store and you pick up a supplement and you take it home and you take it and, and nothing happens, you know, and you wonder, well, I wonder if anything's happening. Man, these are these supplements really are real. They do the job. Incredible. They will detox you. They are uh, anti-inflammatory. Phenomenal. In fact, you, awesome. when, you start, when you start our supplements, you want to be cautious of uh, detox reactions. The hurt time of reaction because they're going to release stuff in you. Right, like the like they call it the same thing as like die off or whatever. Die off, that right? Means? Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, for for those of you who are new here, uh, not not that I'm going to brag, but I, I just want to share with you that I am not from the ivory tower doing research to figure out what Morgellons is or how it works or how we're exposed to it, as you see the, Merc the ivory tower researchers do and say it's not contagious because I've been working with people for, for 30 years and I haven't picked it up. Well, that's a, that's a lousy explanation. You know, you just might not be susceptible to. I have personally dealt with columbulus at springtails. I've dealt with mites. I've dealt with... Lyme disease, which almost killed me, uh, Morgellons, skin fungus. I've been through the trench, and I have my life back. So well, God bless you. I put I'm glad, out, I'm glad I, put I out, stumbled yes. upon you. I put out an update uh, a week or so ago. I'm going to do it again, and I implore you. There, very recently, uh, uh, someone shared with me a YouTube uh, video, I think it was uh, uh, Channel 4, uh, I, I don't know which, what, one of the major, uh, and it was about more gallons. And these videos, I mean, there's one script that they keep passing down. Oh, people are suffering and they're, it's, you know, they see the lesions and they see the skin and, and, uh, and the lady shares, oh, I've been in misery all this time. And then the uh, re then the uh, the commentator oh and then we go to talk to uh, 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 in this case it was uh, Dr. Strickler and uh, uh, Marianne uh, uh, Middleveen 
uh, the, the people doing research and trying to figure out what Morgellons is. And, oh, and this is what we're finding. We're finding spirochetes in the, in the filaments, and we're finding that the filaments are there. And, uh, and, and then we, we interview some more people who are suffering from Morgellons, and uh, there seems to be no, no relief, no, no, no cure, because the doctors don't even recognize it exists and principally diagnose it. The, the script has been written over and over and over, and there's nothing there to do. I mean, they don't even go on Amazon and find Dr. Saverly's book. They don't even go on Amazon to find my book with 225 4.4 star reviews and say, hey, maybe I should check this guy out. I don't have an MD behind my name. I'm sorry. I just got a lot of, a long past of a lot of suffering behind my name. And that's a protocol more, that works. That's more knowledge than the doctors have. Well, tell that to them. So um, I'm going to put, out, put it out again. Go to that, that YouTube video. Every time you see a YouTube video, you can go down and you, you can post comments. I even written, wrote one up. You can modify it and post a comment. Maybe somebody will read these comments and maybe go to Amazon. I mean, not that I love Amazon, but that's where my book is, and that's where the 225 reviews are. Uh, and, you know, the only people that have posted reviews giving me a one or two star are people who can't understand that medications like Prinazide, ORAP, or Zyprexa, or uh, that they may help. You know, they think, oh, they're antipsychotic. You believe what the doctors say, that, uh, that I'm a psychotic. They don't believe or understand that these medications have an imp impact on dopamine levels, which also reduces parasitic activity. They're not antipsychotic medications, as they think they are. They are antiparasitic medications. There's a different uh, use for them. So they're the only one or two star reviews I got. Wow. And it's unfortunate that people don't understand that, uh, you know, these medications have a different application. So you can read a whole book of information that you'll never find anywhere, a compilation of research you'll never find anywhere, and find one little detail that you disagree with and give me a one star. I'm sorry. Don't understand it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to uh, reading your book and um, getting more knowledgeable about this. Robin, sure. how many times have you read the book? At least Pardon five. Me? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, another <laughs> Robin. <laughs> yeah, we Robin, don't... my co-host. How many times have you read yeah, the I... book? Yeah, I was going to say, we five. Don't have to say no. I thought you were asking me. <laughs> well, uh yeah, it just turns out that my co-host, her name is Robin, too. And people who get their lives back just don't skim through the book. They don't just read the book once. You know, even when I update the book, this is the 10th revision. Robin and I are working on the 11th revision. She's uh, going through it right now, doing some editing, adding some things in, and so forth. We're working on the 11th edition. So we're not just happy to leave things alone. We keep adding and improving and learning more and passing that along. Uh, she's read the book five times. She's got post-its throughout the book. So people who do get success in this book put their energies in. They come to this program. They put their energies in. They send the emails. Uh, they invest, and the rewards are there. You're worth it. Well, that's the best knowledge to have, you know, is the hands-on people who suffer with this. <laughs> Well, thank you, and keep coming back. And, uh, yes, uh, get get started on that diet. Make it kick in, and the rewards are amazing. Do you actually, have you done conferences, like went out and spoke about this? or? No, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I, this is the most I, I've been at. You know, uh, I have a publicist, believe it or not, I have a publicist, and he won't even touch more gallons. My background is in stress management. I have a lot of... Uh, uh, information about hypnosis and stress management and biofeedback and self-esteem and all of this stuff. And, and that's how he promotes me. He won't even touch more gallons because it's so stupid. I mean, it, it's so idiotic. And so, but, so no, 
So uh, go to, uh, I'll put out that post, uh, go to that video, uh, post it, so maybe uh, uh, somebody will get some information that there is a different world out there other than uh, crying and saying, that, well, we don't quite understand what it is, and, and people still don't know what to do about it, because we do know what to do about it, and we do know what to do about Lyme disease. I'm curious about that too. Mm -hmm. I I um I don't know if you've ever heard of the gentleman called Dean uh Gene Decode. But he no. he suffered from uh Morgellons and I actually had printed out I you know, uh got in contact through his email and printed out a bunch of uh info about Morgellons and he basically in the one section he says, This is what they want you to think make you believe Morgellons is and then, then he puts down, he says, but this is what it really is, and it lists, it just has a whole list of everything that probably everybody under the sun's been diagnosed with, which is technically misdiagnosed with, and it's quite interesting. I mean, he does a, he had to do a whole protocol. It almost killed him. So, I mean, I <laughs> well, there are, there, are many there are many protocols out there, and there are many people have shared with me that they have almost died from uh, in instituting some of those other protocols. They can be very dangerous. Right. <clears throat> well, I definitely am willing and look at, you know, want to look, read your stuff and um, see about purchasing some of your products to see if they can help me. And again, I'll do the questionnaire and um, wait for you to get back to me and let me know what you think with the questionnaire, my answers, sure. I guess. Be glad to. So Thank that, you so much. You're welcome. That goes for anybody on the call. Please complete the questionnaire if you haven't already done so. I will evaluate it. It takes me about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, one, one, you know, please, one thing. It's basically a yes or no questionnaire with maybe a paragraph of explanation, one or two places. Don't give me long stories, uh, uh, you know, about what happened when you were 10 and when you first noticed this happening and, and then when you were 16 this happened. And, you know, don't give me those. You see, right now, where you are right now, it's a yes or no kind of kind of questionnaire uh, with, you know, what are your eating habits? So there I want to hear about what your eating habits are, where you contracted it or how you contracted it. There I like a little bit of history about, oh, yeah, I was out chopping logs and uh, this thing happened and I, I got exposed to this or I was on an airplane and I was riding, uh, you know, and after I got off the airplane, I started itching. You know, those, that's the kind of information I'm looking for. Thank you. <clears throat> Who's next? Uh, Richard, uh, talking about uh, this uh, Robin's question, I just want to say a little bit about yourself so the people in the audience will know your background and maybe uh, she's in the right track by su suggesting that we need to be in the community education of, of people realizing what this disease is. So I want to say a little thing uh, about a couple things about Richard. Uh, he too suffered from both skin parasites and the lack of real solutions from modern medicine. Uh, but unlike most sufferers, being a lifelong senior engineer and a lead problem solver at companies like Dupont, Richard was in a unique position to seek out the real solution. After years he spent in development and self-testing, he shared his breakthroughs with other parasite sufferers. The results were very clear. As a chemical engineer by profession, he was able to shed some light and insight about these diseases. Richard is ready to help communities in spreading and educating people about this disease. He is available for speaking opportunities in your respective communities. Initially, he will be available via Zoom or a remote session, but will share his thoughts as a foremost expert in this area to a live audience as a keynote speaker in any mid-size to large in-person meetings, conferences, and webinars throughout America. So I just want to throw this particular sentence out there. So if you come across any organization or your own community, your own uh, nonprofit organization, or other um, um, uh, support system you have, it may not be for Mogallans, but for others, Richard is willing to uh, go the extra mile to provide the knowledge and expertise he has. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I don't recommend meetings where people who are suffering get together, you know, like the uh, 
the Margallans, uh, they, they have a yearly thing in Austin, Texas, where every, they invite everybody with Margallans to come and, and the experts to come as well, and they give presentations. I don't, I don't recommend that kind of thing because, like, for instance, uh, I have one client that uh, uh, was working through my protocol for several years. She's actually a firefighter. She goes around, and she's part of these people that are uh, out there in the West fighting these terrible fires, and she had all kinds of problems. Uh, she, had the, she had organisms in her throat and her neck and everything, and she got her life back about maybe 90% and, and uh, was really doing well. And she heard of this facility in uh, uh, New Mexico or Texas uh, run by uh, uh, Chapella, uh, where it's like a retreat for people suffering from Morgallons. And she thought maybe by going to the retreat that she would get that extra 10% back and maybe a little vacation as well. Who knows what? And she went there. She reported there's no disinfection protocols. There's no specific diet. And after she left, she developed another parasite. She contracted something while she was there, which made it worse. So, you know, we need to respect the hygiene that goes with this and, and be socially responsible. And when we have these organisms, being socially responsible is a bit isolating. It means you don't go to the barber anymore. You don't go to the salon anymore. You even want to be cautious about going to the doctor. One of my friends, who is a medical doctor, lives near close by. He was a, a, an alternative doctor for my mother for many, many years. I became friends with him. He ended up contracting more gallons. He and his girlfriend. Strangely enough, he found me on the internet. You know, we're only miles apart. And through working with him, the diet and so forth, and, and he also had the benefit of uh, biofeedback, uh, rifing technology, he and his girlfriend got his life back. And I implored of him, since he knows of it, to be working with clients. Many of our clients would love to, and we do have a medical doctor, by the way, but this is before we had working with Dr. Sue. He flat out refused. He refused because he will not work with a client by phone only in his office. And the reason he didn't want anybody bringing this thing into his office to contaminate his other patients because he knew the hell he had gone through personally to keep it from spreading from him and his, uh, well, his girlfriend was his uh, receptionist, to the patients. So it's important to be socially responsible with these organisms and not go spreading them around and attending events, sitting on airplanes. And, you know, I'm not saying you're going to have to stay home, but it's a good idea that before you go out, <clears throat> that you make sure that you're doing pretty good on the diet. You know, that, that's step one. But you want to bathe. Before I used to go out, I would go in a bathtub. That, this is before nature's gift. Scalding hot, the only thing that worked for me, scalding hot with uh, you know, bleach or, or uh, essence salts or something like that, but ba basically scalding hot. And then I felt okay, kind of normal, and I could go out and be amidst midst of others for maybe a couple hours. But that was my limitation. So you want to be socially responsible. And before you do go out is to take a long bath. If you're using our Nature's Gift products, it doesn't have to be scalding hot. It can just be warm, comfortable water and uh, with a disinfectant, and then shower off, and then, yes, uh, go out and and experience life, but uh, be socially responsible. Okay, anyone else? Um, I ha I have Nick wants to talk. Nick, hi Nick. How you doing, Rich? Uh, I'm doing. I I gotta say, what all the stuff you're saying is great uh, advice. Um, for me, I'm 
I feel I got it in remission. I mean, this program works. I mean, the diet works, sanitizing, the support, Robin, you and Richard and Chris are amazing. I mean, I, I went down to, you can go to other people if you choose to. For me, I did that experience in the beginning, and, you know, the guy didn't know he was a healer. He didn't know what he was talking about. He just threw <laughs> some ivory mechamatic. I did a blood transfusion, I could tell everybody. Uh, nothing worked, and it made it worse, whatever he put me on. This is the only, uh, for me, my own opinion is the, uh, Richard, him being an engineer, they like to fix stuff. They like to figure it out. They just don't like to throw stuff at it. If you look at it like this, when you go work on a car, you need certain, everything has to have a certain wrench, or, uh, you know, from, you know, it's the same protocol as this. This is the only game in town that I could find that helped me. I, I feel great. I mean, I eat what I want. I Right now, I'm doing good. You know, I still, you know, in moderation. Um, um, if anybody, I'm a life coach, too. If anybody wants to help, I'll leave my phone number at the end of the segment. But uh, I thank you. I got to thank you all tremendously. You've saved my life. Thank you, Nick. Now, uh, let me ask you a question, Nick. When you first got into the program way, way back when, well, which is what, about? Eight nine months ago, in March. March. Yeah, March. Did you think it would make? Did you think it made sense? Did you think it would work? What was your initial impression? No, I think I. I thought, to be honest with you, I thought I said this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm gonna go do it my way because I'm hard headed. That I, I I'm always thick headed. So it caused me um, instead of listening to you, I could tell everybody this. It cost me ten thousand dollars to go to a healer, which was a waste. <laughs> of my life saving. So he lands because he knows what I went through. You know, it's not, you know, it's, not, but if I would have just listened to Richard and Robin, I would have avoided that. But I did not listen. So, you know, other people are, pro you know, in the beginning, it's tough. I know it's tough, but if you stick with this program, you will be, you will feel a lot better, believe me. You know, if anybody wants my phone number, I'll give it at the end of the segment to talk. I feel great. I mean, I, I don't know what to say, you know. I mean, you know, he, he engineers are different from doctors. That's all I got to say. I yeah. don't want to throw stuff at everything. Thanks for your kind words. I appreciate it, and I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, you, you benefited from uh, uh, our protocols and, and our, our support here. And, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, great to have you as part of our team. Okay, Thank anyone you. else? Yep. A a a anyone else uh, have a question, uh, Chris? Andrea. Andrea. Well, let me just introduce Andrea until she catches up to us. Andrea has been with us uh, for quite some time, and uh, she volunteered to transcribe a series of uh, reports or videos on 5G. <clears throat> Now, we talk about a lot of different things here, and if you read Chapter 3, I think it is, of the book, uh, you know, I, I, Mark Gallon seems to me, personally, you know, this is my opinion, that it's the result of a perfect storm. You know, and uh, Hurricane Sandy was one of those perfect storms that happened about six, seven years ago. I finally got some of the last logs gotten rid of, from the trees that have fallen down from Hurricane Sandy. So <clears throat> you take glyphosate, Monsanto's evil herbicide, which destroys gut flora. You take Monsanto's evil uh, GMOs, which contain pesticides in the foods that you eat. <laughs> so you put those two together. You add in 5G which are wavelengths of millimeters instead of miles, like radio waves have uh, maybe 70-some miles would be a, a length of a radio wave that you listen to on FM or AM, and you have 5G, which is millimeters, which 2.54 centimeters in each inch. Now, we're talking millimeters, all right? Uh, ten, 10 millimeters in every centimeter. Uh, 
which actually stimulates the, the electronics in our brain. And that's what the updates, one of the uh, second part of the update went out today about the dramatic impact. And of course, some of us are more susceptible to these things than others are. But what I speculated all along, which was really echoed in this report, is that the 5G doesn't just affect human beings. It affects plant life. It affects animal life. So if you hear crazy uh, squirrels running around attacking people or something like that, it's probably 5G going crazy in their neighborhood with it. So uh, you put these together. Now, okay, we can get in, we can talk about chemtrails too. I, you know, that that's kind of bordering conspiracy, but I think there is enough evidence or enough, there's enough speculation that there is something going on with this organization called HAARP, which uh, does experimental work using chemtrails uh, to seed uh, the atmosphere with metals that uh, some of them aluminum, which are not good anyway for our bodies, but uh, anyway, so you put all these things together and it just make, makes it so easy for the Morgellons to, uh, to exist and become more prevalent today than it ever has been in our culture. Andre, are you there? <clears throat> yes, I am here. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, Richard. Hi. Good to be with you. I have one question uh, regarding supplements. Uh, I started to use multiple cocktails and food. And um, I'm just curious, what is the reason uh, to stop the module cocktail for two days in the beginning? Because... Honestly, I just made a mistake. I didn't stop it. I didn't make a pause. So I'm just um, curious if I made a mistake that I just continued without stopping it. Uh, are you asking about the Morgellons cocktail? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have to plead ignorance. I have to go on the, the site and actually look at the description. I know it's got uh, five oils essential uh, organic oils in it, cinnamon, uh, clove, uh, uh, two kinds of cinnamon, in fact, uh, bark cinnamon and uh, leaf cinnamon. It's got oregano, and I know that there have been several studies published, uh, some work done at Johns Hopkins, which has indicated these oils are uh, have therapeutic value in, in dealing with, uh, uh, well, these organisms, and I know a lot of people are using it, but I, I really don't know much about it. I, I have it on the website. We have uh, super saturated potassium iodide also in our store, mm -hmm. and I have to plead ignorance in, uh, in both of them uh, and, and refer you to uh, other sources on how to use them. But uh, was your question about having used it too much or too – because they're, they're very powerful. <laughs> My question was just very simple that uh, according to direction, I should stop it uh, to use after two days uh, or three days for two days and then continue. And I didn't do that. I just continued um, in the line without without the pause. So I was just um, curious what is the reason. For you, did, you didn't take a break. I, I don't think there's yeah. any problem there I you know I, I don't have enough experience I, you know I'm sure there are people that have been using the Morgellons cocktail for quite some time who are probably know a lot more about how to use it and, and, and benefit from it than I do and if one of them is on the call or if you know one of them we welcome you to uh, uh, be a guest speaker and share how you've used the Morgellons cocktail I used it every morning for months, and um, it helps. But I wouldn't. I don't think there's any problem. No. All right. So it, it was just minor. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. And then I have another question regarding supplements. Um, 
I would like to know if um, I'm still on stage one diet and uh, I was thinking about uh, taking collagen, but I'm not sure if it is safe for me because basically gelatin is not allowed for stage one. Well, so it collagen should be safe for you. You know, uh, I, I know you have... Uh, a, you, you put a lot of work into getting the diet to kick in and you have, uh, there are things on the diet that most people can have and, and you find very limiting for yourself and that's part of what is making a diet kick in. So that, uh, knowing that, I can't guarantee that collagen will uh, be a problem or not a problem for you. Uh, all I do know is that everybody who has had the ravages of these, uh, you know, the, the lesions and the disrupted skin and layers of skin that have been destroyed and, and uh, uh, rashes would benefit from being on collagen. And we, I have found uh, the, the brand I use is Organics. It's got five types of collagen so that it is the most effective. And some people have said, well, uh, being that the filaments and fibers from organelles are comprised of collagen and keratin, w shouldn't we avoid taking collagen? And the answer is no. You want to replenish the collagen. You want more collagen. It's very much like uh, organelles also depletes us of uh, organic sulfur and iron. So you, M MSM is organic sulfur and is one of the most important things to take if you're dealing with uh, uh, more gallons, is to replenish the organic sulfur. It's in every cell of your body. So collagen, yes, if you can, if it agrees with you and it's not a problem, absolutely, take it. You might start off with a little bit, you know, it, it has a scoop. Instead of taking a whole scoop as they recommend every day, Maybe take a, an eighth of a scoop for starters. Better than nothing, and then work up from there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I will, I will make it. And, and thank, you for, thank you for all the work that you've done in uh, transcribing those videos. You, di you did a great job. Oh, Richard, yes. thank you very much for your evaluation. It means a lot for me. Thank you. And You're I welcome. really love to participate. And it, it really built me. Make, it and if anybody feel. hasn't seen today's update that went out, please read it about 5G. This fellow, Martin Pyle, seems to know more. I mean, he's a Ph.D., and he knows more about what's happening with uh, the effects of 5G than the physicists do and the biochemists do and the doctors do. I mean, he's really looked into all the aspects, even into uh, human reproduction, how it interferes with uh, re reproduction and everything. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, so it's part two. Part two was issued a couple days ago, and uh, you can find that on the blog. I think it's uh, published on the blog now. And to get to the blog, anybody can go to best, B-E-S-T, like best man at a wedding, bestmargallonscure.com, and click on the blog link. Uh, have a statement for Richard. Yes. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> hi. Hi, Richard. Um, I've been diagnostic for um, Lyme, Lyme uh, Borrelia, Borrelia. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the doctor who described me was uh, Dr. Ibrahim. Remember the doctor in your book? Yes. Yeah, he did. Borrelia is an easy test. It's a Lyme test, a blood test. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is he got does he have you on a treatment? Yeah, but he put me in the, in, the, in the plant juice, and the first time that he sent me the plant juice, I recovered 50%, 50%. But after that, uh, I'm not, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not doing well, the, the second doses. And I think I, I'm going to, um, uh, I don't know, what you recommended to 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 take to the antibiotic thing? Well, I, I recommend our basic nutritional pack, which is the uh, uh, columbolite slash lime pack, the 
multiple vitamin, the minerals, the max one, and the garcillin. Uh, you may have to go higher in the uh, the on the uh, dosage of uh, max one and garcillin. You can go up to uh, uh, six or seven capsules of max one. You can go up to seven or eight capsules of, of garcillin. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Work. I mean, I, I had. Borrelia, and I did have to go on an antibiotic, and it knocked it right out. But you want to take a lot of, like, acidophilus, and if you're not on stage one of the diet, you want to take, you want to take prebiotics and probiotics, but you can't yeah, uh, take those on stage one, not the probiotics. Right. You work on the prebiotics. Right. You build up the gut, gut health as well. Right. Okay. okay. Well, I understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're seeing him. He's a uh, he's a great physician. Okay, I have to take the col la Calembo la package. Yes. Calembo la package. Okay. Right. Yeah. Every, everybody should be on that package forever. <laughs> it's, okay. It's basic nutritional package. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's too it's strange during immunity, right? What? It, yeah, it it uh, improves it, it improves health and immune functioning. Immune functioning, yeah, I know. Okay. 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 All right. It's gonna they gonna fight, the body, of course, uh, is gonna fight with the sicknesses. Uh, my my personal experience is 13 years ago, Lyme disease just about killed me. I could not uh, sleep. 24-7 pain. I couldn't even drive an automobile because my leg hurt so badly. I couldn't write my my name. It, it was bad news. All right. Then I learned about glutathione. And by accident, I started boosting my glutathione. Within six weeks, see what glutathione does is it gets rid of toxicity. And the Lyme disease loves toxicity. So it took away its swimming pool and my symptoms diminished by 95%, which was incredible. I, I suddenly saw that I had a life to live, a part of a life anyway. The 5% was still no fun, but 95% better was a lot better than uh, where I was. Then I happened upon somebody that shared garcillin with me. Acillin? I didn't think, you know, you, you think you take a capsule, what the hell's going to happen? You take a capsule. Man, inflammation, detox, like I couldn't believe. One capsule, and my knee had inflamed 100%. The pain was excruciating. It took me two weeks to get rid of that detox, get my lymphatics drained. I used a vibrating pillow to help drain the lymphatics. Now, with this basic nutritional package, I'm 99.9%. .9%. So that's the thing you do. It's not a cure. I would never claim to be a cure. It's not a treatment. I would never claim it to be a treatment. The purpose is to build health and immune functioning because everybody is deficient in glutathione. You cannot live and not be deficient in glutathione. Not with solar radiation, 5G, uh, poor sleeping habits. <laughs> I mean, there are so many things that deplete. Tylenol destroys glutathione. All the NSAIDs, like Tylenol. If the, a, if the AMA and the FDA had any brains and the CDC, they would outlaw these goddamn Tylenol and uh, the NSAIDs with the acetaminophen. It destroys glutathione, the building block, the, what you need to, to live. So, yes, uh, you build health through these supplements. You build immune functioning. I'm not saying it's going to, uh, you know, it, what it does, if you need then any treatment, 
What's it going to do? It's going to make any treatment you want more effective. So how Lyme disease is treated? Well, there's salt and vitamin C. That's in a free report that tells you how much salt and how much vitamin C. That's one approach. There's rising. That's another approach. There is antibiotic therapy. That's another approach. But of them all, the antibiotic therapy is the less desirable because more people end up crippled. Uh, I mean, I've had people that can't even eat food because their guts have been destroyed because of the of the uh, uh, antibiotics. I mean, the, the the level amount of food they can eat is so minimal, if anything at all. Every you know, so uh, the okay. basic nutritional package, do it. 